multi-leader replication. Some popular architectures for data replication include single-leader, multi-leader, and leaderless. So we covered single-leader in the previous video, and this video we'll be covering the multi-leader. So if we cannot connect to the leader in the single-leader replication model, all the writes are suspended. How can we possibly fix this? Apart from performing a leader failover, which we may have some constraints that we have to wait a specific amount of time for that failover to occur, or it occurs manually, we can also have multiple leaders. And this is what is known as multi-leader architecture or master-master replication. Multi-leader architecture is particularly powerful in multi-data center operations. So let's take a look at this. For the left-hand side person, they're in Canada, and they can talk directly to a leader. The leader will then propagate the changes to a follower. But that happens in data center number one, which is in Canada. Then the leader will also send the changes over to the data center number two leader, which is in Romania, so all the way in Europe. There, there'll be some conflict resolution that will occur, which I'll talk about later. And then that leader will propagate the changes to the follower. So this means that the individual in Canada does not need to potentially wait and send it over to the leader in another country. So this gives a lot of performance improvements and reduced latency. We can compare single leader replication and multi leader across several axes. So, first is performance. The perceived performance can be improved because clients can perform write requests to leaders that are present in a data center with closer proximity to them. Tolerance of network problems. Links on the public internet are less reliable than intra data center links. Hence, synchronous replication for a single leader may cause issues. We also have tolerance of data center outages. If any data center fails, then in multi-leader replication, other data centers can continue independently, while a single leader will require failover and the entire operation can be disrupted. Even beyond data centers, we encounter multi-leader replication as shown, and many of the advantages and disadvantages of multi-leader replication surface in these examples as well. First one is collaborative editing. Applications that allow editing documents and media concurrently can be modeled as a replication problem. So the local master would be the browser window, while it replicates to the server and other users asynchronously. So an example is Google Docs. Another example is offline operations, such as email and calendar events. A specific device may allow operations to occur offline, and then once the network connectivity is re-established, then the data can be resynchronized to the other masters. So why don't all systems use this? If we have data written in two different leaders at the same time, which one do we use as the source of truth? There are also many subtle issues that can arise. For example, auto-incrementing keys, triggers, or satisfying integrity constraints are some examples. Moreover, for systems that span a single data center, many of the benefits will not even apply. So what are some resolution strategies for conflicts? First is actually just avoiding conflicts entirely. For example, each user can be assigned a leader, such as by geolocation, and then all rights always go to the same leader. However, in our example with Canada and Romania, if the Canada data center goes down, we'll need to resolve and fail over to the Romania data center. And during that process, we may again arise into some conflicts. So this doesn't entirely fix it. We can have synchronous replication. So for each master, the changes will be blocked until they're up applied synchronously to all slaves. Unfortunately, this results in a large performance penalty and sort of voids the whole purpose of having multiple masters in the first place. We can also use convergent conflict resolution. The idea here is to apply a consistent strategy so that all replicas converge to the same result. For example, provide all replicas an ID, such that replicas with higher ID are always written to before those with lower ID. Another option is we can do some intelligent merging schemes, such as concatenating strings, or doing a timestamp based, which is known as last write always wins. Automatic conflict resolution is an active area of research. So down below, I provided several examples of different techniques and data structures that can be used to resolve conflicts more easily. Multi-leader topologies. There are three main topologies that can be used for multi-leader architecture. First is the start topology. We can also have a circular topology, or we can have an all-to-all -all topology. These are the three main approaches that can be used. The most general topology is the all-to-all -all topology. However, other topologies are used as well. So MySQL uses circular by default, actually. Circular and star topologies have a single source of failure, which makes it more prone to problems. However, this doesn't make all-to-all -all topologies strictly better. It also suffers from issues where certain network links may be quicker than others, leading to incorrect ordering of events. So, we learned about the motivation of multi-leader replication. We also learned about applications that many may now consider to be a database replication problem, along with several conflict resolution strategies. Then we looked at multi-leader topologies. Thank you very much for watching, 
and is greatly appreciated.